West, a long time ago, they'd had the <coughs> big shindig there. And ordinarily, when they called on me to preach, I'd preach whatever I wanted to. Sometimes they would make requests on this occasion. They, in a letter, told me that they wanted me to preach on the subject, what are we supposed to be doing anyway? I shrugged that thing off and did what I usually do. I'd say a little bit about it and then go ahead and preach what I wanted to anyway. But after that, over and over, that came back to me, Marty, several times. That was a real good question. We get in the habit. It's, it's, it's Sunday morning, so, well, are you going to go to church this morning? Yeah. No. Don't feel like it. I'm sleepy. Couldn't wait to sleep on, blah, blah. Uh, what are we supposed to be doing? Well, if I'm going to find out what I'm supposed to be doing when it comes to a relationship with God, I'm not going to do any better than to go to God and see what he says about it. Indeed. And whatever he says about it is of the utmost importance. I ought to, to the very best of my ability, do that. The Bible says whatever your hand finds to do, do it heartily unto the Lord and and not unto man. So whatever it is I'm supposed to be doing, I need to be doing it with my might. The apostle wrote to the Thessalonians, Thessalonians, and he said, my gospel came not by word only, but with power and love and deep conviction. Did such a good job with that that the Bible says he became a, an example to other churches. It said that the gospel went out, rung out. So he says the book, it rung out all over Asia Minor. It was the, so effective. What was it again? My gospel came not by word only. So I think it's a good idea we can hang on to that. First of all, we preach the gospel. The gospel is God's power to save. The gospel needs to be preached. The gospel is God's power to save. We need to declare it. We all ought to be involved in sharing the gospel. What does the world need more than anything else? It needs the gospel. It needs the good news. It needs to know of God's love and Christ's sacrifice and our hope. Ah, that needs to be. Back to this. My gospel came not by word only. Just words, that isn't enough. It's the right words. It's with power. It's not words, it's not just words, but the words are to be delivered with power and with love whatever. Now, if that's true when it comes to preaching, I think it's also true as we share the gospel with other people. We talk to people, it should be something that is good, and it should be with power. Power. Uh, I don't want to get sidetracked and talk about singing, but singing ought to be with power too. We ought to put our hearts into it. Uh, we oughtn't have to strain, and or can we understand it? To talk a little louder, turn it up a little higher, whatever. It ought to be heard. It ought to be heard, not with power, not with word only, not with word only. Mumble it out. That won't get it. You need to be. If it's worth, if it's worth sharing, it needs to be heard with power and love, power, and love. Lift up your voice. The Bible says over and over, it says, lift up your voice. Lift up your voice. Why? It's powerful when you lift up your voice. Mumbling is not powerful. Being scarcely able to hear it is not powerful. With power and with love. Back several years ago, I met a preacher who became dear friends, is to this day. 
But the first time I ever saw him, uh, he preached away from here, and he started to tell me about the sermon he preached last Sunday. He said, boy, it was terrible. He said, it was so powerful. He said, I ripped him up one side and down the other, uh, tore, tore their backs and rubbed salt in it. I thought, you fool. Now God says don't do that. I didn't say it, I just thought it. If you have to be powerfully difficult, hard, you ought to have heard about it. You ought to have heard about it. This word that we preach, whether it's the Bible class or whatever, we're declaring the word of God, we ought to do it with power and with love, and we ought to believe it. It ought to come across. This is my conviction. This is what I believe. I feel this strongly. I want you to understand this. I want it to bless you. It blesses me, I want it to bless you. Power and love and deep conviction. And it needs to come across, I really believe this. So, our habit is, it's Sunday morning. In a lot of houses, many houses, I, I fear, it's, are you, are you going to church this morning? I can't remember that ever being said. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, I had some bad thing happen here. It was, caused a lot of disturbance. And I struggled after that uh, about going, am I able yet? Can I do that? I don't want to put that on people again. But I want to go to worship. Let me tell you why. It is so important. If you forget everything else, get this. Jesus was talking to a woman at Jacob's well. During the course of the conversation, he said something quite remarkable. He says, God seeks men. Just hang on to that for a second. God can have everything he wants. No, he can't. Did God get everything he wants? No. God chose not to control you. He does not force me. He does not force you. Sad thing that happens in our relationships with one another, we want to force people to do our will. That doesn't go well. That isn't God's way. God created us in his image. What is that? It's the ability to choose. God always lets us choose. One time a bunch of people was following Jesus. Great crowds was following him. And he started teaching them some pretty rough stuff. Most of them didn't like it. So the Bible says many of them went back and walked no more with him. What did he do? Oh, don't do that. Let me, let me, I was a little rough. I'm sorry. I apologize. I'm sorry I offended you. I didn't mean, let me, let me tell you what I really mean. No. He turned to his apostles and said, you also go away. You're free to choose. You want to leave? Go ahead. I won't interfere with that. Will you also go away? Thankfully, Peter said, to whom shall we go, Lord? You have the words of eternal life. Hang on to that. Words of eternal life. Words are important, very important. There's words that lead to eternal life. And he says, uh, Peter said, we have that, <laughs> no place else to go. We need to remember that. Words, the word of God, the word of God guides us. It doesn't take a whole lot to understand how to be saved. Do you believe Jesus Christ is the son of God? Yeah, okay, I'll baptize you. you know, now what? Now you're gonna learn how to live, how to serve. You're gonna learn how, what my will is for the way you live, what you do. That's more difficult. Thing is this, Jesus, I'm talking about what is really the most important, what to hang on to. A lawyer came to Jesus one time and he said, what's the greatest commandment of all? Well, that's taking a shortcut. I don't, I don't want to know all the stuff. 
just the, the grades. What's the most important? Don't, don't bother me with that other stuff. What's the most important thing of all? Jesus said what? What did he say? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Yeah, what that amounts to is you love God with all the strength of your being. With everything you have, love God. If you forget everything this morning, next week, everything you've ever heard, don't you dare forget this. You, it's, God didn't command much, but he said, you love him with everything, with all the strength of your being. You love God with everything you have. Got it? Yeah. Okay. Keep it? Yeah. What helps us keep it? Uh, Marty, if I forget where it was, bring me back to it. It's Lord's Day. What day? Lord's Day. John said he was in the spirit on the Lord's Day. That's where we need to be, on the Lord's Day. You going to go to church this morning, honey? No, that shouldn't be there. Get the kids up. Oh, they, they was up late last night. They don't feel like it. We got, uh, we've got this game to go to. We got, you know, no, no. Jesus seeks men to worship him in spirit and in truth. John said he was in the spirit on Lord's Day. If you can be in the spirit, you can be not in the spirit. When you come to worship, you need to come with the right spirit. Uh, I, I'm going to confess something here now. For a long, long time, I've had difficulty with being in the spirit on the Lord's Day. For a long portion of my life, I'm a coward. On Lord's Day, I hide because I don't want somebody jumping me about something or another, finding fault. When I've got to get up and preach, I want to be in the right spirit. And it's hard to be in the right spirit when somebody's criticizing, finding fault, and so on. Surely that doesn't happen. No. Oh, yeah. I've gotten, uh, anyway, I just confess my sin. I, I try to avoid that. I try to be in the spirit on the Lord's day. When I wake up, I want to get excited about it. I get to see my brothers and sisters. I get to go to worship. The thing to start with is, I believe, what do I want to come to worship for? Do you ever hear the expression, I don't get anything out of it? Yeah? Do you ever think that? Maybe. That's all wrong. I've been a long, long, long time. I don't, I don't know whether I can remember the last time I came thinking what I'd get out of it. I always come obeying the Lord, trying. The Lord said, it's more blessed to give than to receive. I come to worship with a, in mind trying to give people something will be a blessing, something will be helpful. So we need to get that straightened out. Yeah. We're to love him with all of our strength, all the strength of our being. And he seeks men to worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, he told that woman at the well, the father seeks men to worship him in spirit and in truth. So it's not just coming to worship. I'm to worship him in spirit and in truth. I need to be in the spirit on the Lord's day. I need to, when I sing, I need to sing, not mumble, not bumble, not hit. One, one thing that's extremely difficult for me is I can't sing anymore. If I sing, I can't preach. I don't have enough air, air left to, to do it. And it's so difficult. I do it in my head. Maybe sort of mumble or something once in a while. But we ought to do it with all of our might. Let me sidetrack for just a minute about how important that is. 
I was preaching in Texas. You stick out that big, big building, biggest one in the Brotherhood. And you just stepped outside and there is where the, the cowboys play, right against it. And so I'm preaching in a meeting, first day. I uh, go to worship, all excited, big crowd. And they brought in a, a song leader. They wanted a good song leader, so they brought Bernard, Bernard Lasseter. I'd never heard of him. Bernard, Bernard came out, and, and there they didn't just have a little pulpit, but they had a big stage. He came out on the stage, and he had on an orange suit. It had no pockets. It was skin tight. I said to myself, what in the world's he doing here? And he started to sing. He started to sing, Jesus loves me. First thing I thought was, Jesus loves me? You know, I'm used to, Jesus loves me, this I know. He started singing, Jesus loves me. Marty, he got into that and I started crying like a kid. I'd never heard it before. I never heard it, never really soaked in. Jesus loves me? Jesus loves me? I know he loves me. So I was crying. That night, next morning it was, next morning I called him, uh, we had room in the same, or same hotel. I called him and asked him to be with me for lunch. He said, oh, I appreciate you asking. I would love to do that but I gotta get ready to, to sing, lead the worship tonight. All afternoon, mm -hmm. he got ready for that one thing, sing at night. Mm -hmm. Never had an experience like it. Ordinarily, it's such, I say, I know that one, and then, you know, reminds me of the first time I ever tried to lead, well, second time. It's going to, uh, there was a, an elder in a church someplace had died and I didn't know him. And another preacher was going, I already knew him. He said, you want to go too? So I went, got down there and somebody met me at the door. He said, are you David Powers? I said, yeah. He said, somebody said, you can lead singing. I'd made an attempt one time at Byesville. And he said, one of our men couldn't come. You sing the lead and walked off. I came out of a, so three people are sitting up there with the books, and I went up and got the books, and well, let's see, I can sing that one. I don't know, do you know, no, do you not know? So I finally found three songs that I could sing. I gladly would have traded place with the man in the coffin. <laughs> I was scared to death. It was a horrible thing. I decided there's much more to leading singing than that. Somewhere along the line, I came to the conclusion, it isn't leading singing, we need to lead worship. Amen. We can sing and no worship. So often singing takes place, no worship. Let's see, I know that one. Uh, let's say, but, but, no, no, no. It's so important. When we're worshiping God, we are in direct communication. We can sing about God, but when we sing to God, we're in direct communication with God. Our mind ought to be so in place that everybody catches it and we'll pour out our hearts to God, God who loves me and saved me. Yeah. It's so important, Amen. so important. So what are you gonna talk about, David? I'm gonna talk about this. The most important thing, the scriptures kind of indicates, that we're to, to love God with all of our being. Question for the house. I'd like to have you some up here with, with some so we could hear you, not like I heard J.R. a while ago. You'd think J.R. wasn't even saying anything worth saying anything worthwhile. But he's saying some good stuff, you can hear it. Anyway, where was I before I got off on that tangent? Mm -hmm. 
Lord. Yeah, it was. We're to love God with all of our being, everything that I have. The Bible says to do that. What, come on now, what does it look like if we're doing that? What does it look like? We're going to sing praises to God. God is going to hear me and I'm going to sing my appreciation and love to him. That's what's going to take place. I have to be in a proper frame of mind for that to happen. But it needs to happen. How I leave, when I, how I am when I leave here depends on what takes place while I am here. While I am here. We praised God. I praised God, you praised God. You get a congregation where everybody is singing praises to Almighty God. You talk about power. Beautiful, wonderful, we are moved, we're strengthened, we're better, we're stronger. We find some strength to get us through the difficulties of this coming work, week. What does loving God look like? Question open for suggestions. What does it look like? I think it looks like this. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I think that's a pretty good place to start. Sure. Be of the right spirit. We worship God in spirit and in truth. So when I came, come through, hi, you may, hey, Marty, what are you doing? See the ball game yesterday? No, we're missing it. A little bit, so it's time to it's, it's time to sing. We're not ready. We're not in the spirit. We're not. We got to work at it. What's going to take place? I am going to be in direct communication with the God of Heaven, who gave His Son to redeem me. I want to do a good job. I want Him to know how I feel and how I love Him. Now I'm talking about how to leave feeling it was good for me to be there. Another thing takes place. When that's taking place, we want everybody to get it. We don't just come for us. We're concerned about other people. You come in, you come to give and not to get. Oh, hi, Martin. Hi, Marty. So we stand, what about this guy standing back here? What about, I wonder who that is. Go introduce yourself. Pay attention. Care for them. Care for them. Go with us for dinner today. See, it's getting outside of ourself and living for and serving Almighty God. Question again, open for discussion. What does it look like? What does, what does it look like to love God with everything we have? Well, Can you see it? That's right, that's one thing. The big, thing, the big thing is this. Get this right, and I'll shut up if I, if I can get this across. Come to worship to give. We call it coming to church. Coming together to give, not to get. Look at people. You see somebody with a face or something, he's burdened. Go to him, talk to him, encourage him. There's something I'm working on right now, and I want, to, and I want it to work. This is a difficult time in the history of the church, the history of the nation. People are hurting all over, people dying. It's a difficult, difficult time. Our nation is in terrible condition. It's a hard time. 
very difficult time. We need to be thinking about giving, giving the very best we have to give. The Bible says, righteousness exalts a nation. The main thing that comes on, not just when we come to worship, righteousness exalts a nation. I talked to the woman or I'm buying something to eat or whatever. What I should be thinking, righteousness. Righteousness for me, righteousness for her. Righteousness exalts the nation. Appreciate her, love her, talk to her. It's not just hurry up, I'm hungry, need something. No, they're having a hard time, having a hard time. We live in a time where nearly everybody's having a hard time. They need to be recognized as somebody of worth, genuinely care for people. Love God with all you have, yeah. What's that look like? It looks like stop thinking about yourself and think about him. Your every morning when you get up, I'll quit now, when you get up, the first thing should be, and you get to it's a habit and it will be, you open your eyes, open your eyes. What's the first thing? God, what do you want me to do today? Not my will today, but your will be done. No matter what's going on or what's taking place, no matter what's on television, <laughs> no, no. God, what's your will? I want to do not my will, but your will. Sad thing is so many start out with what they want and try to make it agree with God. I don't think God cares if I do this. I don't think God's gonna condemn me if I do this or that or whatever. It needs to start with today, good morning, Father. Thank you for my rest. Guide me where you want me to go today. Not my will, but your will be done. Amen. Let it be, oh God. Let it be. Not my will, but your perfect will be done in my life today and all the todays that you give me. In dear Jesus' name, amen. amen. Think about these things. God bless you. Have a good day. God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above.